Many times we hear from, from patients and others, what's the best type of testosterone to use, right? Perhaps they're asking about what the right ester is or what uh, the right treatment modality is as far as is it topical, is it injectable. We're going to discuss if there is uh, the best ester or what that even means or if there is a, a better treatment after this with Dr. T. So keep watching. Hi and welcome to Balance My Hormones where we support men and women on their journey to optimal hormone balance. If you're new to the channel please press like and subscribe so you don't miss future content. So today we're here with Dr. George Tuliatos, a TRT doctor in Greece and our European Union Medical Director for Balance My Hormones. Dr. Tuliatos has written numerous books on bodybuilding and hormones and he also goes by uh, the name Dr. T. So welcome back, Dr. T. How are you today? Hello, Michael. Thanks for the uh, invitation. So today we're talking about, uh, you know, is there this perfect ester, this this gold standard regime of treatment? What's the best ester to use? Is there a best ester? Uh, or is there a best even treatment? Uh, what are your thoughts? I don't think so. Even though I've used all the esters for PNA, and then I'm saved. Uh, and the undercount need, I realized that after a while, uh, all the esters and testosterone circulates into your bloodstream. Uh, however, uh, there are some benefits of the fast acting esters because introduced to the system rapidly from, from the first day, you know, they peak way sooner than the slower esters. And uh, allegedly, you can use the propionate. On a, on a more frequent protocol rather than the enanthate, for instance. But I've used the enanthate on a daily protocol as well, even the undercountate. And I realized that it takes more time, of course, but it takes some time. And after a while, there are the equal levels with equal doses. But of course, you know that propionate releases 80%, enanthate 70 undercountate 60%. But after a while, no matter how the, uh, if, if the dose, I'm sorry, is equal, then you're going to have equal total testosterone levels. The point is, um, in, the, in the very beginning, the half-life plays a role until you reach the adequate levels in the serum. So steady state, a steady state level. Um, now, we know that enanthate has a half-life of one week, let's say, I mean, five to seven days. Okay, it will, it will spike, it will peak on day two to three, okay? Uh, unlike the propionate, that will spike a day after. Let's talk about propionate uh, as, as a potential modality for some sort of microdosing. We know that um, there's been some you know, false rumors and, and misunderstanding by, uh, by some people who, uh, maybe in the bodybuilding community, maybe just patients that have read something on, on forums. And, and one of those... Um, I guess, uh, fallacies or falsehoods about testosterone propionate is that it burns and it stings. And, you know, one of my, um, from my knowledge, I, I had been prescribed testosterone propionate is that, uh, that that's not really true. It's, it's uh, I think it, because it is a very... I never heard of something like that. I mean, I never experienced something like that. So perhaps it's, it's something spread falsely, you know? Yeah, no, nor have I. I never heard of something like that. I mean, I never experienced something like that. Well, I, I, well, I think the origin of that comes from the, the fact that sustenone contains propionate. And then some people have falsely made this link that the test prop in uh, the sustenone makes it burn and sting. And we know, in fact, that for sustenone, we'll talk about that later, that it's actually the arachis oil and the concentration of benzoyl alcohol that may cause some of the burning and stinging. Yeah, benzoyl alcohol also may give you some coughing, you know, some cough. And you get that, they can get that swelling from sustenone. But from the patients that have uh, used testosterone propionate uh, daily or every other day, uh, along with HCG, they, they've not reported any post-injection pain, none. Um, and, and that's because I, I believe that the, the product comes uh, very diluted with a one mil volume uh, rather, and, and in a small, uh, small amount, like 25 milligrams for one mil versus um, maybe some uh, underground you know, steroids that are, are not made properly, uh, may have too high of a concentration of a bacteriostatic agent. Who knows what the, what's, what's in there? So maybe that's why these falsehoods are made about, about testosterone propionate. Um, do you agree? 
Yes, certainly. So the oil plays a lot, a lot of role. You know, some people are, um, uh, they cannot tolerate uh, uh, arachidonic oil, I think, okay? And uh, they cannot stand this. I mean, uh, they're, they're uh, how you say? Oh, arachis oil, yeah, the peanut oil, yeah. How, well, let's talk about sustenon then, and then we'll go into the other esters. So um, we know that sustenon is a blend of um, there was testosterone propionate, phenyl propionate, uh, what else is, um, isocaparate and, uh, and, and, and decanoate. Uh, I think I hit the, so you've got a blend of esters and we've, I mean, I, I use, I'm, I'm prescribed Sussnon now and usually, you know, four or five, five days after the, uh, you know, testosterone injection, 100, 125 milligrams. You know, we, I've seen it myself and other patients, you can normally see uh, a testosterone level between 25 and 30, 35 nanomoles per litre. That, that's just kind of what you see the norm when it's done on trough, which is how we measure it on trough. So, um, you know, it seems like it, it, it does, does the job. Uh, though, on, you know, it, it's been originally developed to be lasting three weeks, which is insanity, because, you know, after about seven to 10, 10 days, depending on the dose, it may, it may, it may you know, leave the system not giving someone you know, optimal levels. So, I mean, what, what's your experience with Sustanon? I never use Sustanon just in bodybuilding, you know, I was taking two shots a week. But uh, referring to Undercount 8, I've used an Abido, but not under the standard protocol of 90 days, you know. But was taking a bit of Olegra as it was an uh, athlete test, for instance. So it took a couple of uh, months in order to reach out to to pick up, uh, you know, to catch up by uh, the the levels. But after I think the the third month, it was I did. Okay, and the other one's testosterone sipionate, uh, which is much more readily available in the United States. Sipionate, I've been using sipionate underground for bodybuilder, yeah. It has a similar half to anything. I can also say when we looked at blood tests, uh, you know, patients uh, about you know five days post, you know, 100 milligrams of sipionate usually works out about similar to 125 of the sustenon blend, and uh, and the levels are exactly where where they'd be expected to be. Uh, so there's no no surprises there. And it comes either to one or two hundred milligrams, you know, unlike the anaphthate that is 50. So yeah, in in Europe it comes in 100 milligrams per two mLs or it's made in 250 milligrams per two ml. So it's highly diluted, uh, you know, compared to others. And obviously in, in Europe, there are no uh, multi-dose vials, uh, I think with the exception of, of Nibido. And then we talked about Nibido, which is testosterone decanoate, which is a big, large injection that's supposed to be injected every about 12 weeks, which leaves people with a, a very slow ramp up to a peak, followed by uh, being short and not having any or hardly anything of hypogonadal levels by, by week 12 and supposedly after a year year's worth of going back to the clinic and having injections is supposed to reach a steady state but in practice we get many many patients who aren't happy with that particular regime and it's supposed it was developed just around to satisfy the clinics to maybe make it easier to administer but in practice uh, I think it's a, it's a painful injection because of the volume four milliliters to over the thousand milligrams have to be injected so so there's no really advantage. And then finally, finally, there's the testosterone with no esters, uh, testosterone gels or creams. Obviously, those are two different animals of gels, and the creams are something that are bespoke, com compounded uh, to, uniquely for each and every patient with various different uh, liposomal bases to allow for the absorption through the skin, uh, where the uh, deeper layers of the skin act as a reservoir for the testosterone, the, the bioidentical testosterone or the unesterified testosterone uh, to, to reach the bloodstream. So I've, I, what, are your, what are your experiences with testosterone creams? Well, the creams have the benefit that they are introducing a minimal dose daily. They have stable levels. They spike way lesser than the injectable ones. They're smaller doses and they cost more, of course. So you need more of the material in order to reach out the same levels with the injectable. So I, I can tell you from some of the bloods, it's, it's like anything, um, you know, I guess you can say horses for courses. There are certain 
benefits uh, for, for each. And, and on the creams, we've seen some uh, patients do really well and they get a really good absorption level. I've, I've seen levels of you know, 30 to 35, 12 hours post-application. That's an animal per liter. So a very optimal level. It also depends where you apply this, in which spot, because you need low fat. But I'm telling that uh, it's the way of the, of the administration of the cream that costs, has higher cost rather than to the injection, okay? And that's true. And when you think about it, you're saying, you know, a cream is going to have uh, 100 milligrams per, yeah, but it does help those patients who have a needle phobia. It's more expensive way of TRT. So I've always said with the creams that uh, you're slightly tethered to your, to your, to your cream pump. You, if, you, if you're without the creams, you might last two or three days before your symptoms return. If you're without the injection, you know, depending on how it's been dosed, you're, you're uh, essentially can last you know, seven to 10 days without really starting to feel the, the symptoms of low T. I suppose the caveat is if you're doing daily doses, then obviously you've now gone back to the, uh, having less of a cushion if somehow you were separated from your hormone or from your treatment. So that's, um, there's always a pros and cons to each. So I suppose the premise was, you know, the best ester, the best treatment uh, for TRT, but really everyone is so different. Everyone's desires, their goals, what they're uh, willing or able to do to stick and be compliant with the treatment varies. So I can't think of there being uh, a perfect uh, protocol or a perfect or ideal or gold standard treatment. It's this, the, the, that treatment that is the best or gold standard is one that's best for that individual. There are some patients that prefer every seven uh, because they just can't be asked to, to, to do an injection. There are others who prefer every five, every four. Uh, we, we can tell by looking at the blood levels. And do they feel good uh, the day before the, the weekly dose? Sometimes, yes. Uh, in, you know, the longer that you're on it, when, when you first start on, on, on the testosterone, initially by week six, you know, some people say, oh, they feel like it's uh, not, not as good on the day of the injection or the day before the injection. But if they continue... Do they spike the two days after? Well, they all do. Even the creams will spike a few hours after, right? So they all spike. To a lesser degree if you use smaller dose. To a lesser degree if you use smaller dose. Uh, of course, but you can you you won't get as high of an amplitude, of course. But you're still seeing um, you're still seeing an, you're still seeing a spike, and you're still seeing a trough. And if you're having less of a spike, that means you shorten the time. I mean, it's just that's how it works. But no, I, my personal thought is there is no perfect ideal ester. It's what works best for the patient. It's about the dosing uh, and, and how how you dose it, and it's very much individualized for every patient. Would you say that's that's where you have to look at what the patient's goals and needs are? Yes, also it depends on what the patient wants. If he wants um, to be injected daily, if he can afford this, I mean, if he can, if it's bearable for him. Okay, some people hate needles. Some people cannot be so obsessed and following a daily protocol. You know. Okay, that's well said. Uh, I agree. So. Anyway, let us know how you do your TRT if you're on testosterone treatment. Let me know if you, um, if you prefer injections or topicals, if there's a particular ester that, that you're using. You can leave those uh, in the comments below. And again, if you like the channel, please uh, let us know by pressing like. If you don't like it, also let us know by in the comments. And, uh, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Dr. George.